MJ movie reviews back again. All right, y'all. Um, this is an on the fly movie review. I actually literally like just dropped the movie off at Redbox, so I figured I'd go ahead and get in the review. Um, I'm gonna do, and this review is late, but uh, I came across the uh, I guess new Eli Roth movie, and apparently, but apparently, it's not really new. The knock knock is new, and this one's older. The Green Inferno. Um, I had heard about this movie a couple years ago, and I heard that Eli Roth of uh, Hostel Fame and Cabin Fever was going to be doing a cannibal movie, like Cannibal Holocaust and, and those other films. I've never seen the, the Cannibal Holocaust movies or whatever. I've never seen any of them. The only movie I ever saw from the director who did those movies was I saw Cut and Run with Michael Berryman and um, I can't remember the actor's name from Charles and Charles who played Buddy. Um... I saw Cut and Run, which I might do a video review of that one day. But uh, what did I think of The Green Inferno? Um, it, comparing, even though Knock Knock and The Green Inferno are uh, two different sides uh, of the ones as uh, suspense, you know, and this one's a gore fest. Um, I could say that I mostly liked The Green Inferno. Uh, I guess I would more lean towards saying that it was okay. Um... Uh, I really like the concept. I really like the concept that you got these students at a university and uh, they're going to go to some, uh, they're going to go to Peru uh, because, you know, there's dirty stuff going on in foreign lands and these American students are going to be activists and they're going to go help. And then they come upon a file of cannibalistic serial predators. Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 reference. And, uh... And pretty much uh, havoc ensues from there. Um, and I like that concept. I, I think that concept was really cool. Um, and, I, and I mostly like the movie, even though I've seen enough horror pictures. And those of us who are horror fans, we, we've seen enough to know what direction it was going in. But I was, I was still, uh, I was still okay with with where it was going. Um, and it went everywhere I thought it would go. Um, you know, it had some nice surprise kills and gross out moments and the gore is really good um the nice little twist that i like they added here was uh you know they added in uh kind of you know the the big big uh suspenseful moment is they added in you know this whole female mutilation thing that they they do a lot uh really a lot in african countries uh I think Middle Eastern countries, they do it too, which is just a horrific, a horrific, horrific thought. And I like that they add it in because, you know, if, if one thing, I mean, I know there's people who are not fans of the Splat Pack, which would be um, Alexander Aja of High Tension, Eli Roth, uh, Rob Zombie, and I think the other guy is Edgar Wright. Uh, I, I don't really know Edgar Wright's films like that, but the other three guys I, I really know. Um, I, you know... He, Eli Roth, I'm I'm kind of half and half. You know, I, I I like kind of the gorier aspects of his movies. Like I, I really like a lot of the kills in Hostel and Hostel Part Two. Um, and there's some character things that I like in those first two movies. Cabin Fever, I wasn't really a fan of, but I mean, it, it, yeah, it was an okay watch. Um, and I already saw my you guys saw my review of Knock Knock, but um. I really like when the characters are actually being butchered and stuff. I think he can shoot that really well. He handles the gore really well. Um, I kind of take issue with sometimes moments that I feel might be adding in a little bit too much goofiness that kind of takes away from the terror sometimes, which is I kind of think the case that happened here, but he kind of did the same thing with Hostel 1 and Hostel 2 is sometimes... You know, and I, and I and I understand the concept. I understand that there's some filmmakers who kind of want to. You have that heavy gore, but you want to throw in a little bit of goofball kind of like the stuff in Hostel Part Two with the kids. They chopped off the chick's head and they kicked it like a soccer ball. I was just like, you know, it's t I thought that was too goofy for me personally. And I kind of look more like Alexander Ages' approach, where like when you watch the Hills Have Eyes remake or when you watch High Tension with the goofy twist aside. It's, it's heavy and it's real when people die. I mean, um, I give an example. That trailer attack in the Hills Have Eyes remake is just like, oh, my God. It, it's just very, very nasty. And um, the scene in High Tension when the killer 
uh, breaks into the house and kills the dad and slits the mom's throat. It, it, I mean, that that just, ooh, it it just feels real. And the thing is, like, you look at the Green Inferno and you you know you get these scenes where like you know the chick is gonna get uh, her vaginal mutilated and and the scene where all the villagers are grabbing everybody and they're like, oh, I mean, it's really intense and it it feels scary, but then. You know, this supposedly from the commentary, the, the little masturbation scene, they Eli Ross said that it was really based on something that was real. Um the way it comes across in the movie, it comes across as is is goofy the way it is in the movie. Um that's kind of my thing. But but it was I, I I thought it was okay. I thought it was okay. Um and there was a nice little scare uh boo moment towards the end with kept in the tradition and Eli Roth is is like uh, Alexander Asia and all those other guys and you know people like me. We were raised on seventies, eighties horror, you know. So it was nice, nice little boo moment that was a good homage to eighties horror films. You know, kind of you know, a la Friday the Thirteenth. You know, one through I think it was four or whatever, where they always had that boo moment at the end of the movie. But uh, um, and I thought that the actors did a really good job. You know, my goodness, I can't remember the girl's name. But uh, the one who uh, Eli Roth is married to, I, I like her. Yeah, she's got very gorgeous eyes. I just love her eyes. Her eyes are very, very pretty. And uh, you know, she did a good job. Everybody did a good job. So it, it was, it was okay. It's just kind of the Eli Roth kind of uh, trademark kind of goofy little comedy things and goofy characters that he kind of sprinkles in his movies that kind of takes me out of the intensity. Now, I guarantee you, if Alexander Aja would have made the Green Inferno, uh, that girl probably would have got her, her uh, vagina mutilated. Probably. Uh, as a matter of fact, that movie probably wouldn't even had a happy ending, man. It probably would have been very, very intense. Eli Roth structures it in such a way that you get relief. And also, uh, I make a comment is, um, what was it, uh, where they figured out a way to get the uh, the, the the cannibals high. I was just kind of like, ugh. That kind of kind of took me out of it a little bit. It kind of just brought the tension down for me. But uh, I think if, in this particular film, you know, if you kind of took away those little comedy bits, I, I, I think it would have been much, much more intense. But as it stands... Uh, you know, that's how Eli Roth makes his movies. And I definitely think uh, um, I, 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 it was okay. I mostly liked it. Um, do I like it as much as the first Hostel? No. Um, uh, I definitely like it better than Hostel 2. And I definitely like it better than Knock Knock. So, um, you know, for horror fans that like gore and, you know, definitely for people who are fans of Eli Roth, you know. Check out the Green Inferno. You know, my review was like way late, but it just came to Redbox. So, um, thumbs up my video, share my video, subscribe to my channel, and um, please leave some comments down below about um, what you think of Eli Ross movie, what you think of the Green Inferno. Um, we can talk about 80s horror in the comment section too. So, um, RMJ Movie Reviews, I'm going to be back with my Black History Month movie review, which is going to be the 1984 classic. Purple Rain, starring Prince. RMJ Movie Reviews, folks. I will see you soon.